Welcome back everybody to the Daily Hero Friday edition, super duper special, awesome reaction just to everything Disney announced yesterday edition. That's why I'm sitting down because I cannot possibly stand and go over every little bit of detail. If you watch the Daily Hero, you know it's the best place to hear comic book, movie, TV, video game, nerdy news goodness here on the internet, and that my name is Sean Barry. But today, it's not just the top story, it's every story. I'm gonna give my reactions to everything Disney react, uh, reacts. I'm just gonna start over. What's up everybody and welcome back to the Daily Hero. The best place to go to your comic book, movie, TV, video game, nerdy news, goodness here on the internet. And if you've been watching for a while, you know my name is Sean Barry. And usually it says top stories, but there's every story is being reacted to today. We have a whole list of gigantic announcements from yesterday's Disney Investor Conference and that we can go over this bad boy in full. I'm gonna just give you my live quick reactions, but they announced so much stuff. It's probably our longest video yet. It'll be fun, and let's go from there. On that, let's get into the news. First news they announced is Ryan the Last Dragon, the next Disney Pixar film, will premiere exclusively on Disney Plus with the Disney premiere access of $30. The film tells the story of somebody doing something. I know that's not what you guys are here for. You're here for Star Wars and Marvel, but I'm literally just scrolling through the Disney Twitter stream, and we're gonna get to it from there, and we'll see what happens, because it makes life easier. Yada, 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 this is how they're gonna make money, this is how they're gonna make money, money, money stuff. Ooh, ESPN Plus, something I bet most of you nerds don't watch, because sports are what, you know, our nerds are people who like working out their muscles, like me. <laughs> There's a new Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez special coming at you too. I bet none of you guys care about that. You just want me to talk about the ye old Star Wars. Why the Last Man adaptation is coming to FX on on Hulu, uh, which means you'll get day and date release on Hulu uh, while premiering on regular cable television of FX. If you haven't watched Why the Last Man or read Why the Last Man, you definitely should. It's one of these seminal graphic novels of our time. Uh, it's an epic journey and story that I'm very excited to. It's starring Diane Lane. I don't know why they announced Diane Lane, because she's apparently just playing York Brown's mother, but we don't know who's playing York, or the entire cast as a whole, or any premiere footage yet, but I'm still looking forward to that, because if they nail that right, that will be bigger than Game of Thrones. An alien TV show, being written and directed by Noah Hawley of Fargo fame. Now this should be really exciting because he also did Legion, which was an excellent television show that people love starring Dan Stevens. So this is something to look forward to. As we all know, the Alien franchise has kind of sucked these last three decades. Yeah, three decades of sucking. So, But if you can bring it to the small screen, scale it down, and bring it back to that immense horror every week, maybe, just maybe, the Alien franchise can be revived. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia has been renewed for four more seasons. Four more seasons. Flip, flip, flip Philadelphia. Flip, flip, flip Philadelphia. If you watch It's Always Philadelphia like me, I started watching that when I was 12 years old. And so that should just tell you everything you need to know about why I'm so fucked up. That show is hilarious. It has stayed pretty consistently funny for the last 13 seasons, which means that there's a Great chance of this. It's going to continue being great for until season 18, setting a brand new television record for any live action show ever, especially shattering all records, as they've also noted that it has maintained at least 3 million viewers per episode, which is unheard of in the modern day. That's the loyalty of your fan base. It means Dennis Reynolds is a golden god. Alright, we get, finally got to the timeline where we should talk about. Star Wars. Confirmed, Mandalorian Season 3 coming to us next Christmas. Do we need to talk about The Mandalorian? You watch it every week. It's great. It's fun. It's awesome. Grogu, Ahsoka, all that fun stuff. First big announcement coming out of this are two spin-off series, everybody. Rangers of the New Republic and Ahsoka. Officially announced. It's so announced Rosario Dawson literally just signed on the dotted line two days ago from when I was recording this. Now that is incredible news as we all know because we now get more movies set past Return of the Jedi, which I think is the most exciting time in the entire Star Wars canon because that's when things are in flux, the Empire is defeated, but the Star Wars galaxy still needs to be wrangled in. So Rangers of the New Republic, no word on who's directing, who's writing, who's starring, 
but it's possible that it could be starring Cara Dune and Grief Karga, and maybe, spoiler for today's Mandalorian, maybe just maybe Bill Burr's Mayfield. That could be a really interesting show, uh, as we're really just seeing the chance of basically a Law and Order type show going on in the galaxy. And Ahsoka is, at this point, a top five Star Wars character for most people. So her show was going to continue Star Wars Ario Dawson. No word on who's writing and directing yet, but we can probably look forward to that lasting at least a few seasons, maybe teaming up with her Rebels characters, uh, going more in depth of what it's like being a great Jedi. All right, next next announcements. We got past those two. Uh, the Cassian Andor series is officially shooting. We have our first sizzle reel, which you guys will link to right here. Uh, it looks interesting. Dan Gilroy did write it, who did all the reshoots on Rogue One, but he was going to direct it, but only left it because of not participating in, due to COVID-19. Moving on. Here's a big, big huge news. Hayden Christensen is returning as Darth Vader, not Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, which is set to start shooting this March, this coming March. Uh, it's very exciting news, as we're probably going to get one final showdown between the Master, the Apprentice, the Brothers in Arms, the High Ground, the Low Ground, and the Burnt to a Christmas, and the Guy Who Hates Sam. It's going to be directed by Deborah Chow. It's a limited series. There's, no, there's only going to be one season of it. We don't know how many episodes yet. Realistically, probably somewhere between 8 to 10. Uh, we'll see how it goes. It's very exciting stuff, as we know it's going to implement the same technology The Mandalorian uses. Ewan McGregor is on board, and it's a lot of exciting stuff. As we also know that there were, as you can tell, a lot of Jedi were not killed during the purge of Order 66. But Darth Vader was tasked with hunting most of them down, which let me tell you, bro, he did. I'm really looking forward to that series. I'm hoping Hayden Christian gets the redemption to uh, not have to act as poorly as George Lucas made him. If you want to check out a good acting job by him, check out the movie Shattered Glass. He's incredible in it. And it really deserves a chance to really shine as an actor because he got blackballed due to, the, you know, how poorly he is in those two movies. We got our first look at Star Wars The Bad Batch, the latest animated series spinning right out of the Clone Wars. Uh, as you guys have watched the final season of the Clone Wars, they introduced these band of characters, and based on the sneak peek we got, Fennec Shand, who's in The Mandalorian, is also in this show in animated form, probably voiced by ming Nam Wen. No confirmation on that yet. Looks exciting, though. Here's another one I'm really looking for. This one is called Star Wars Visions. It's going to be an anthology anime series featuring nothing but Japanese creators doing their takes on Star Wars Legends and Universe. We don't know if this is canonical yet, but it can be a really exciting way of shaking up the franchise, bringing in new art styles. If you guys know me, you know I love Star Wars Clone Wars, the original Tartakovsky version that uh, based on it, not Star Wars The Clone Wars. I like that more 2D anime style uh, slashing, and plus just think about how much cool shit anime can bring us. Just imagine a, a force power-up scene. Like, or just some, you know, very perverted old man hitting on a, on a Sarlacc. Black. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? <sighs> now, the galaxy's favorite scoundrel, Lando Calrissian, his baby, is coming back to us uh, in a brand new limited series for Disney+. Plus. Justin Simeon is in the early stages of developing the project as the writer and director. Justin Simeon, if you do not know, he did uh, a new movie such as called Bad Hair on Hulu, but I know he did something else that I cannot think of because my brain is melting because I have to keep talking into a camera right here. I might take a break after Star Wars and reset for, for Marvel. Justin Simeon, he did Dear White People. That was the show. Really good show and movie. I apologize to him. I didn't know it off the top of my head. I knew it, but I, my brain's melting. It's exciting. Donald Glover's back. Donald Glover was the best part about Solo. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't have to bang any more droids, and Lando gets to develop more as a character. Maybe we see how he took over the Cloud City of Bespin. Really exciting one, too. Leslie Holland's uh, show that we know she's been working on for a while, Leslie Headling, excuse me, uh, brings a show called The Occult, The Occult, The, Acoly the Acolytes, excuse me, The Acolytes, to, uh, just gonna be set during the High Republic area. And apparently it's going to be a mystery thriller that takes viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic area. Apparently this is gonna be a very female-driven show, which is awesome, uh, it's gonna, you know, via the High Republic. So I imagine how that original High Republic fell uh, and turned into the Republic we know and low that turned into the Empire. Uh, it's a whole new era, whole new Jedis, whole new characters, whole new speak. I mean, nothing to be know about this yet, but it's a new era of Star Wars because it's time we got past the Palpatine saga, am I right? Uh, Lucasfilm Animation is teaming up with Lucasfilm Visual Effects team for the Industrial Lights and Magic to develop a Star Wars adventure for Disney+. Plus. A droid story, the epic journey will us to a new hero guided by R2-D2 C-3PO. And if you're like me, 
you very much remember the old droid animated shows that were kind of crappy. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna get back into the next news dive on this stuff.